New drug promises muscle gain without gym or training. In this video, I'll explain this new drug, its scientific proof, safety, side effects, and more. You've been commenting a lot on this topic this week. I got over a hundred comments about this new drug. Why? Because many influencers and non-expert doctors are discussing it. Let's get to the facts then. I'll also share tips on building muscle mass since that's our topic. So stick around till the end. There are nine tips, and the last one's the most effective. All right, let's start with the medication. What's this new drug? It's called Trivoglumab. It's a pretty weird name. It'll probably get an easier commercial name later, but the substance is called Trivoglumab. So what does this substance do? It inhibits myostatin. I know that doesn't explain much, right? What is it? What's myostatin? Myostatin inhibits muscle growth. So you're inhibiting the inhibitor, thus stimulating muscle growth. Make sense? Is that clear? Many animals have this myostatin alteration. And what happens to them? They develop really large muscles. Have you seen that cattle breed with the myostatin alteration? Other animals have it too, okay? So that's exactly what they're trying to do. Inhibit what inhibits muscle growth in this case by inhibiting myostatin it would be a drug that acts on this what stage is this study at is it approved for use yet there's a lot of buzz with many people asking where to buy it and how to use it even patients are talking about it this medication isn't available for purchase yet it hasn't been approved it passed phase one leading many to wrongly assume it's already an approved drug what is phase one it's human trials, but with a small number of participants. This study doesn't assess if the drug works, but focuses on initial safety. It also helps determine the approximate dosage for future use, okay? Importantly, trivoglumab passed phase one and is now in phase two, a larger study also examining side effects. So it's not approved for use and hasn't completed all trial phases yet. There's some preliminary data from the phase two study, but it's based on a very limited number of participants. This study isn't finished yet, but to help you understand the phase one study and gain some scientific insight, imagine this. You're out in your city at a mall or somewhere, and you ask the first five people you see, maybe even from the same family, what's your favorite food? You get responses from those five people. Now imagine all five said their favorite food was sausage with pepper jelly. I just made up that random dish. You surveyed a specific group in a specific city. Can you claim that country's favorite dish is sausage with pepper jelly? No, you can't. It's like what many do with these small studies. A tiny sample size that can't prove anything. Yet they spread info like this country's favorite dish is pepper jelly. Actually, it's sausage with pepper. Do you see? How medical scientific information is often presented is totally different. What's the most feared potential side effect of Trevogromap? This new drug being developed, it inhibits myostatin. The heart has myostatin too, so it might cause uncontrolled heart growth called cardiomegaly. So why is this drug being developed then? Initially for cancer, cachexia or muscle atrophy like many anabolic steroids, this drug was developed. Later, it's often used off-label for unregulated purposes outside its intended use, okay? So that's the whole issue with this medication. It has a purpose for a specific illness, not just for aesthetics. It's for those with very low muscle mass or who've lost weight rapidly, which is common now. What's happening? Many using weight loss pens lose muscle mass, making it hard to maintain weight loss later. So it's also for addressing severe muscle mass reduction from rapid weight loss besides the diseases I mentioned earlier. So be cautious with this information. This medication is still in the testing phase. We can't say if it works or not. It's a drug still in testing without fully evaluated side effects. Agreed? What are nine tips that really work to increase your muscle mass? Follow all these tips. The last one works best as I've seen in practice. What are these nine tips? Tip number one, focus on protein intake. Sources include eggs, meat, fish, and grains. Beans and lentils also contain some protein, though less than meat. These are all good options to include in your diet. Milk and dairy products are great for those without lactose intolerance or milk protein allergies. They're excellent options for people who can tolerate milk and lactose. 
I'm a big fan. The claim that milk is inflammatory lacks scientific evidence, okay? Let's be critical of myths about nutrition, science, and hormones. It's crucial to filter information. Tip number two, equally important, is about sleep. Aim for at least six hours of sleep per night, got it? Restful sleep helps maintain and build muscle mass. Number three, which is crucial, is resistance training. What's that? It's when you exercise against resistance, lifting weights or making progressive effort. What's that mean? You start light, then gradually increase the weight over time. This stimulates muscle growth. Uh, metabolically, it's healthy and reduces various diseases. Studies show more muscle mass means fewer diseases. Interesting, right? Like diabetes. Muscles use blood glucose for energy, which is beneficial. Number four is stress management. I see many athletes falling short here. Mental aspects can really hinder progress as many have a set routine but fail in managing stress. Why? It alters hormones like increasing cortisol, which affects muscle gain. So it's crucial to do activities that lower your stress levels. I love listening to music, piano, or doing something you enjoy. Even watching something relaxing or educational can help you unwind. It's worth addressing stress management. It's one of the toughest, if not the toughest aspects. What's your favorite music? I love Ludovico Einaudi, an Italian pianist. He's fantastic. I often listen to him for two hours daily. It's quite nice. Number five, water and liquid intake. Last time I mentioned quantity, but not the number of glasses. Aim for six to eight medium glasses of water daily, okay? It's easier than asking you to do complex calculations. Six to eight average glasses a day should meet your hydration needs. But should you wait until you're thirsty to drink water? Ideally, no. First, many conditions can alter your thirst perception. You might often mistake thirst for hunger. Thirst can make you eat more, so staying hydrated helps control weight. Studies show we lose our thirst response with age, so set a water goal. For specific cases like dialysis patients with impaired kidney function, a nephrologist might restrict fluid intake. These are rare situations your doctor will explain. Generally, aim for six to eight glasses of water daily. Number six, crucially, is an adaptable diet. People often ask about the best diet, Mediterranean, low carb, zero carb, no sugar, high protein or low fat. You ask a lot about this and the answer is it depends on what you prefer. For me, for instance, it's easier to limit fat given my taste preferences. I can manage that better, but some people can restrict carbs more easily, right? Aside from calories, some folks adapt better to the Mediterranean diet, so it's quite relative. Studies show the benefit is in calorie control, not diet type. Got it? So there's no one-size-fits-all answer. It's the million-dollar question, but that's the answer. It's about your preference. You need to explore. Look at all options. Consult a nutritionist. Note, doctors don't make diets. Nutritionists do. Talk to them and ask for options. I did this with my nutritionist. I said, I want to see all options. From all of them, I'll choose the one I think is best. If these diets focus on calorie control, the results will be very, very similar. Statistically, from a scientific standpoint, there's no significant difference. And number seven, I often see this in my office. Patients wanting to gain muscle mass need screening for other conditions. So how's your blood pressure? What about your blood sugar levels? Triglycerides, cholesterol? How's your good and bad cholesterol? Most people consulting me about this don't know when I ask, how's your thyroid? So that's the first point, the starting point. It could be item one, as I'm not listing in order, just key measures. But if ordered, this would be first. How are your health conditions? All under control? Do you have any situation like this or are you unaware of it? Number eight related to this is checking for vitamin deficiencies like D, B12 and iron. How are your vitamin levels? Some vitamins are proven to help or hinder. A B12 deficiency with anemia, for instance, can make reaching your goal very difficult. So it's crucial to evaluate these vitamin levels. Number nine, perhaps the most effective tip, is setting achievable goals. Break down goals into smaller, short-term targets you can reach. If you don't exercise, start with just five minutes of physical activity. This will help you make progress. In practice, I see many set very long-term goals. It's not that you shouldn't have them, but short-term goals are key for treatment and muscle gain, okay? So for instance, it's pointless to set a goal for two years from now. Oh, I wanna go to the gym every day. Make it for 15 days. For these 15 days, I'll exercise, not necessarily at the gym, but I'll do some physical activity five times a week. 
so it's two weeks, I'll train at least 10 days. You'll find it's much easier to reach your goals and your brain puts up fewer objections. If you set a short time, imagine saying, I'll train two hours daily. Often, you'll make excuses, your brain will invent something. If you set it for five minutes, it's easier. After you install it, you'll see you can really achieve it. So, short-term goals. Do you have short-term goals? I do. Now, tell us which city you're from. Where in the world are you watching this video? What's your favorite local dish from your area? Mine here is barbecue. I'll leave a suggestion. Eight nighttime habits that increase stroke risk. These are habits you shouldn't do. Do you do any of them? I suggest watching this video to avoid them. Click here to be directed to it. Take care. See you next time.